quick overview of my astrophotography uh, workflow. I'm not going to get too detailed, not going to get too nerdy. I'm just going to go over the basics. So uh, step one is I always like to use my cloud cover app on my phone. I check to see if the weather conditions are favorable and make sure that there aren't too many clouds, it's not too windy, the moon isn't too bright, and if things are okay and conditions are favorable, then I pack up and I uh, get ready to head out to my dark site. Okay, and it looks pretty good right now. So once I get there and I'm all set up, uh, I always like to achieve a, a quick uh, autofocus. So before I had a batten off mask, I would put that in the front of my, of my telescope and I would, uh, you know, toggle the knobs in order to get okay focus. Um, I was never was too confident in it. However, after uh, installing this electronic autofocuser, all I have to do is press a button and get that red dot and then I'm in focus. Once the focus has been achieved, then I polar align my mount. So I get my mount and I point it towards the North Celestial Pole, a star called Polaris, the North Star. And uh, I just choose the option on my ASI Air, press a button, and I toggle the Alt-Ass knobs to get me as close to good polar alignment as possible. Now, the purpose of having a good polar alignment is that when you're tracking your object and taking pictures, you want to make sure that your stars are nice and round. You don't want them elongated. Because if you have elongated stars, then that gives you uh, elongated stars in your final image. And nobody wants that. You want nice, round stars. Okay? It takes a little while, but it's much faster than the Pole Master, which I used before. Uh, it's less cumbersome, less uh, wires. You don't have to use a PC. And once you uh, achieve a uh, pretty good polar alignment, boom, you get some fireworks. And that fireworks means time to move on to the next step, so, which is to slew to your target. So the ASI Air has a pretty vast database of uh, deep sky objects. However, what I'm shooting is the dark shark. Um, that's not included. So I had to plug in the coordinates uh, independently and then the ASI Air tells the mount to slew to the target. And once it reaches th uh, those coordinates, it takes a picture of the sky, the plate solves, and uh, if it's in the correct position, it stays there. If not, then it recenters. It might take a little while, but once you get there, you're there, and you're ready to move on to the, to the next step. Okay, you can see it's currently slewing to the target. And it's checking if it's in center. And it's retrying one time. So after you're in centered, then you set up your auto guiding. So the auto guiding in combination with good polar alignment would ensure that your images are nice and sharp and the stars are nice and round. Uh, it might take a little while uh, to calibrate uh, the whole system, but... Uh, once that's done, you have much more confidence in your, uh, your images which you'll acquire 
for the night. Okay. Now we're done with all the setup and it's time to shoot. So this is the Dark Shark. I'm, initially I shot with the 2600, but uh, my results weren't favorable. So I switched to the 071 a couple nights later. Uh, around five minute exposures, a total of around six hours. And um, got some pretty decent shots, which I was happy with. Uh, the other, uh, my other rig was uh, set to shoot the Ro Onfiyuki uh, Cloud Complex, which is this image right here. Shot around six hours as well. Uh, it's a really nice image. A lot of people like to shoot it when Milky, Milky Way season uh, presents itself. And uh, again, six hours, good autofocusing, good polar alignment. And let's, uh, let's see what I uh, came up with uh, through the night. All right, hope you enjoy it.